Well, here it is, you guys, my brand new Sir Modern Plus. And isn't she a beauty? Look at the top on this thing, the exposed binding. Well, there's just one problem. This is a forgery. Welcome back to the channel, you guys. I hope you're having a great day today. Yep, we've got a forgery in our midst today. Uh, this is my brand new Sir Modern Pro. We're gonna talk about what makes this a good forgery that could actually fool people, what makes it a bad forgery, how you guys can protect yourself, and I'd like to do a teardown. I plugged this thing in, it actually sounds pretty good. I'm curious what kind of pickups they used and that kind of stuff. So I think we'll do a teardown. That should expose everything. Uh, let's get into it. So how exactly did I end up with a fake Sir guitar? Well, when I saw it posted on my local classifieds, I knew I needed to take this off the market right away. And the reason for that was because the seller was honest. When I talked to him, he's like, this guitar was not made in the USA. It was made in Korea and it is not an official Sir guitar. At that point, I was like, okay, I'll take it. Uh, because, you know, the next person who gets it from him might not be so honest. And when you look at the price of a Sir Modern, I'll put up a graphic right here, uh, they start like around 3000 US dollars and go like way up from there. So, you know, if somebody posted this for like $1,800 and it was normally 3,500 bucks, 4,000 bucks, whatever it is, I'd go take a look at that. That's a good deal. And so, yeah, when I saw it, I was like, nope, <laughs> let's just get this thing off the market and take a closer look. All right, so let's start by looking at what makes this a really good forgery that could actually fool people. Then we're gonna flip it on its head and show you guys some areas to look out for to protect yourself, especially if you're buying high-end guitars on the used market. Number one, this guitar has the official Sir headstock shape with the official Sir logo. On the back side, it's stamped made in the USA in the same spot that Sir Guitar puts theirs with a serial number in the same location that Sir puts theirs. On the headstock, we've got a set of locking Grover tuning machines. These aren't the kind with the, the tightening wheels on the back. They have that internal cam mechanism. I've used them before. Um, really nice high-end locking tuners. So, so far we've got no clue that this is not a real Sir. When we look at the nut, it looks great. Looks like somebody who knew what they were doing, you know, put this in. When we look at the neck, the profile on the back, a beautiful one piece mahogany neck, feels really nice. On the front face, the rosewood looks really good. Um, even the abalone dot inlays, every single one of them is bright and vibrant and shiny. I mean, this looks so far like a really nice high-end guitar. Then we look at the body shape. It's correct. We look at the spacing between the controls and the, the three-way switch. It looks really close. You know, the carve, the exposed binding, the little, you know, forearm contour there, tummy cut, even the, the shape of the, the contour on the, the heel looks like a Sir. The way it's attached looks like a Sir. <laughs> you know, even this little contour here that you find on all Sir guitars, uh, the plastics, everything looks in the right place. Even the black locking tuners, it comes with a Wilkinson trim with the bar and the set screw. So, so far everything seems, you know, pretty high end. And of course the finish work is good. This is an older guitar. So there's some swirling from when, you know, the guy was playing it. But, you know, overall really nice. Even the way, um, you know, the two parts of the quilted maple meet, it's dead center on the trim. Three on one side, three on the other, dead center, you know, on the pickup. So it's not a sloppy job. And, you know, when it comes to Korean made guitars, I've said they're the new Japan. They're putting out fantastic guitars. Now, I have no idea what year this was made, uh, but it was not made carelessly. Now, if John Sir ever sees this video, he'd probably be like, Daryl, I can spot this piece of crap a mile away. I did not make that. But for the average person, myself included, it's a really nice guitar. I mean, it even plays nice. You know, not a hint of choking, even on the highest frets. You know, plays great up high, plays great down low. So how is a person to know? Well, let's find out. 
Now before we tear this sucker down and find out what's what, let's quickly go through a few things that you guys can do to help yourself from ending up in this situation, uh, being sick to your stomach, having you know found out that you just spent a lot of money on a you know, fraudulent guitar. Number one, no documentation. If it doesn't have a certificate of authenticity, that can be a flag. Most high-end brands will include it in the case. Now, of course, the person could lie about, you know, removing it and losing it or whatever, but if it doesn't have it, that's part of, you know, a part of a flag. Number two, no hard shell case. Most high-end guitars have a case with branding on it, whether it's, you know, I have a couple music men, they say music men, like, right embossed into the case of course gibson branded or like the fender tweed cases you know something sometimes it just feels right you're like this is the case that goes with the guitar if you know something like this a high-end sir comes in a ratty gig bag that's a flag <laughs> number three uh same kind of thing no case candy no strap no cable no documents uh, telling how to care for the guitar that's kind of like uh, all with the documents but again that kind of builds the case uh, do some quick research, head to the official website, even take some screenshots, right? Headstock, front and back, body, front and back, right? Just to give you some information because, you know, I'm not really familiar with Sur guitars. So I'm a prime candidate to buy one that isn't real, right? Uh, so do some research, uh, take some screenshots so that when you have it in hand, you can quickly just look, right? It's a good thing to do. Um, have there been any aftermarket mods? If you're talking to the guy and getting to know them and they're like, oh yeah, I changed the pickups here, I did this and that, uh, that's again a big flag. If you spend 3,500 bucks, 4,000 bucks on a guitar, you're very unlikely to mod it. You know, if it's an Epiphone or Squire, that's more likely, but on something like this, that's a flag. Um, what else do we got here? Uh, are there problems when you play it? When you pick up the guitar and play it, does it feel like a high-end guitar? Now the guy, you know, when I was getting this Sir, he was like, it won't hold tune. And I'm like, <laughs> that's weird for a Sir, right? And it's a problem. And he's like, I don't want a trem guitar anymore. And when we tear this down, I'm gonna show you guys why that problem is and why he couldn't keep it in tune. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's again, if the guy's, you know, more honest or, or when you pick it up and play it and you're like, oh, there's like, seems like fret buzz or high fret or, you know, this thing won't hold tune or whatever, huge flag. Um, examine the small details. That's what we're gonna do in a second, but I'll show you guys a few areas to look when you just pick it up and you're not sure, okay? And uh, if it's too good to be true, it is. Trust your gut. If some of these things are off and you're like, it's kind of adding up, I don't quite feel comfortable, don't feel pressured to buy it. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. All right, you guys, I've got the guitar on the desk. I'm calling this Project no sir very clever i know <laughs> okay so anyway uh anybody who's played a sir or knows about them uh which is not me uh, would immediately be able to tell from the headstock that this is not a sir guitar number one sir guitars do not have string trees i just had to you know look this stuff up and do some basic research because of the staggered tuning machine heights and the way the the headstock breaks off the angle here um, there's enough downward force in the nut you do not need them so to see them on a guitar like this is an immediate flag you know why do you have two string trees on a sir headstock it just doesn't fit number two sirs come with sir branded locking tuning machines now these are grovers and they're very high end they're very great tuning machines i'm pretty sure they're over 100 bucks um, but they're not the right ones again so you're looking at this and you're thinking about okay well why did you mod this why did you mod this so a couple flags right away next up um, as i mentioned look at the small details so obviously i have the strings off here but look at the truss rod cover you know that does not look like the quality you would expect on a three thousand dollar guitar and uh, i'm pretty sure john sir is like yeah <laughs> that would not pass quality control don't worry john we'll be taking that off the headstock here so anyway uh so that's a few red flags now as to why this guitar did not hold tune as i mentioned the guy who's who i got it from was like yeah i'm not gonna have a trem guitar ever again um, but there's a reason for that, and I think we'll be able to make it uh, work. So anyway, here's third string, which is always a troubling string <laughs> to keep in tune as it is, and hopefully you guys can see here, uh, it binds, and so do some of the other strings, uh, terribly in that nut. So to the point where I, I have to literally like yank it out like that. I don't know if you guys will be able to see or hear that, but 
it binds so bad. Oh man. So anyway, the nut was not cut properly for this string gauge and it just feels like 10 so I don't know what it was cut for but anyway yeah you have, literally have to yank it up so there's no way uh, the Wilkinson was going to keep that in tune so we're going to have to widen these nut slots a bit if we want it to hold tune now looking on the back side again I just had to do all this research because I don't know anything about Sir guitars but made in the USA certainly not uh, it is in the same spot where Sir puts theirs, but it's usually in much smaller print and right down in the corner. So again, it's close, but not exact. And I have no idea if this is like an authentic Sir you know, serial number or not. But I did notice this. The Made in the USA is usually much smaller and down in that corner. And of course, the Sir branded uh, locking tuners with the tightening wheels. Okay, so there we go. Let's move on. Next up, to my knowledge, Sir guitars have stainless steel frets, and this definitely does not, especially having played that blackjack uh, just last week. Uh, you can really tell the difference when you're bending or doing some vibrato. Uh, I gotta say the fret work on this guitar is very good. As I mentioned, it doesn't choke out anywhere. It plays great down low, up high. So I can't knock uh, the fret work, but it doesn't seem right. Okay, I can't put this off any longer. I need to find out what pickups are in this guitar. Wouldn't that be hilarious if they were like Sir pickups? I just, I wouldn't even know what to say if that happened. <laughs> so anyway, as I mentioned, these sound really good. And there's the coil split, uh, which also sounded good. So let's find out what's actually in here. It's possible they're just unbranded, but I gotta say they don't sound bad. Here we go. Let's pull this thing out. Okay. It's actually shielded and stuff in here. Okay. Oh. All right. So we've got our spring. I'll set that aside. And here's the other one. There's nothing I can see here. Oh. Oh, it looks like Tone Emporium. Yeah, dude. Look at that. Okay. So these are Tone Emporium pickups. Circle with the neck. Okay. So. Uh, I believe these are not high-end pickups, but they are well-known. That's cool. Let's check out the bridge. This says the Tone Emporium. I'm not sure. Let's see if I can get this off. Bridge, and it looks like maybe a signature or model. Somebody who knows more about these pickups than I do maybe could, uh, could identify them. But yeah, so okay. So we got a couple Tone Emporium pickups. Very cool. Now, okay, so let's get on to tuning issues <laughs> now the other issue is with this wilkinson bridge and of course this is not something that you would ever see on a sir guitar but it's not quite the right size i'll see if i can maybe take a closer up picture for you guys but as you can see the one post is definitely located with this little crescent moon knife edge right here okay and then the other one is just a flat knife edge but the problem is this post hopefully you guys can see that doesn't sit in the center of that knife edge. It actually sits right on the very extreme edge and where it comes up to the thicker part of the plate also contacts the post. And that is the problem. It just simply isn't <laughs> the right width bridge for the posts. And of course that is, you know, one of those small areas that you could look at, um, you know, just to verify. Now, I think a situation like this would be rare where literally the trim isn't the right size for the posts but uh that with that really really binding nut uh there's no way you know this guitar was going to be staying in tune now along with the truss rod cover there's a couple other areas that you guys could check you know that might give you a hint that this might not be the real thing first of all right around how the neck joint is attached now here you know it's not too bad but there's a couple there where you can see the finish is just kind of you know oblong or it's been chipped off slightly again usually you would not see something like that pass on a very expensive guitar so check the truss rod cover check how the neck is attached now i gotta say the neck joint itself is actually <laughs> super nice um, you know in terms of how tight it fits in the pocket we'll take the whole neck off here in a second uh, the second is the plastics now the plastics feel cheap that's I don't know if my camera will uh, actually focus on this, but uh, they feel very, very cheap. 
And when you look here, there's sort of gaps there where it's like sunk in. Um, another area that you can tell that this is not a sir is the cavity control cover is always countersunk, so it's flush with the body, um, but the truss, uh, sorry, the trim cover is always above the body. Now, I'm not sure why John does that because I actually like both countersunk. I think that's nice. But when you look here, yeah, there's a few gaps there. It feels a little cheap plastic. You can actually you know, see a little bit of the wood on either side here where the trim is attached. So, you know, that kind of gives you a pretty, you know, big hint. So definitely check, you know, how the neck's attached, the plastics, um, the truss rod cover, as I mentioned. And also here, you know, on the front, it looks absolutely amazing. But look at how the two pieces of body were spliced together. They're totally different colors. I'll take a couple of shots of that too. That's a huge you know, sign, as well as having sort of like a seam here on the top where the player, uh, you know, sees it. Why is there a seam there, right? Because a piece of wood has been laminated to make the full body. So on the front face, you never see that and it looks absolutely amazing. And the burst, uh, yeah, that fade is wonderful. And the binding for most of it is wonderful. But there you see, that's not going to be flying on a high end guitar, right? The rest of it, you know, looks super nice actually like it's really really beautiful there's some wear there from a, a strap obviously um, where this was definitely a guitar that was played right so it's just kind of worn there but you know it's all really nice until you hit right there so again that goes to looking at the small details don't just look at the front face look at the side look at the back um, okay so let's take some more parts of this guitar apart let's start by uh, taking the neck off now I gotta say, when I look at these screws, these are about 30 times beefier than what you actually, you know, would find on a fender or something. So I cannot fault <laughs> this neck joint. Really intense screw, so that's great. Oh, one of the ferrules kind of popping out here. But yeah, you can see on the inside, they've got metal there. So I think construction wise, it's probably pretty good. There we go. Okay, let's see if we can get that neck joint off. That is a nice tight fit. Let's flip it over and take a look. Let's just get that out of the way. It's gonna keep falling out. Okay, so the neck comes right to form the front face of the cavity of the body. As you guys can see, there's you know nothing kind of separating that, but the way it's uh, cut is super straight. As you guys can see, and in terms of how it fits, like really nice like I have to actually use legit force to get that in so anyway just because it's a forgery as I've said with guitars made in Korea they're actually really well made now of course um, this is you know horrible in every sense of the word because they are uh, you know passing off something that isn't um, a sir as a sir and that's that's horrible but uh, in terms of the construction and stuff really nice okay so let's Keep going here and take a look in the back cavities. So here's a look inside the control cavity. Looks like we've got a B500K full size pot there. And then uh, of course this is your coil split right there. And I've got to say it actually feels pretty good that coil split. And then your three way switch. Now it does not look like it's uh, <laughs> shielded in there. And is this sandwich construction or is that just the routing? Hard to know. I think it looks like a full thickness. There's that line there though. Is that just the routing or is that a some sort of sandwich? I mean, you can't tell from the edge. So I think it is probably, you know, a full sized, you know, mahogany or whatever. Okay, so let's take a look under here. Again, the, the plastics don't feel terrible, but you know, not super high end. Uh, okay, so no surprises in here. Classic Strat setup where you've got the, the claw, three springs, and your ground wire that comes from from here to your bridge and this is a wilkinson tram so the block actually looks you know pretty nice there it is there's your um, the bar adjustment and as you can see it's not floating so it's uh, resting against the body and so it's only it's dive only at this point i might uh, change that we'll see so there you guys go so that's kind of a look at the guitar itself now we just need to find out what to do with this thing. So hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of insight into what a fake guitar can be. Some parts really good, some parts really bad. All of it 
horribly, horribly illegal. Now that it's off the street and it's in my hands, of course, as I've mentioned, uh, the Sur logo is gone, including the back made in the USA and, and all that stuff. It's all going to be gone. But now that it's in my hands, what should I do with it? Should I destroy the guitar? Should I do a build project around it? Uh, give me some ideas of what I should do with this guitar if you guys have, you know, something creative. Anyway, drop it in the comments section below. Uh, I'll read through those and see what we should do with it. But anyway, there you guys go. That's my story of how I picked up, <laughs> you know, a very, very fake Sir guitar. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. If you have any questions about the guitar or anything, uh, drop them in the comments section below. All my information tab store, t-shirt store, gear I use, all in the video description below as well. And I will not be linking to this guitar <laughs> in the video description below. Uh, yeah, anyway, give me some ideas of what I should do with this. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Have yourself a great day.